Today we're taking a look at all of Vanguard's ETFs in Australia. Now ETFs are one of the most important tools in modern day investing and Vanguard was one of the pioneers. Today, they are Australia's largest ETF provider with a 28% market share and a whopping 55 billion Australian dollars under management. Only 15% of you watching are subscribed to my channel. Make sure to hit that button down below to see more Australian and New Zealand financial content. Let's get into it. Vanguard currently offers 29 ETFs which fall into four buckets. First, we have Australian equities. These funds invest in only Australian companies. Second, we have international equities. These of course invest in stocks all over the world. Third, we have fixed income. These ETFs invest in local and international bonds, savings accounts, treasuries and corporate debt. And fourth, we have diversified ETFs that take a mix of the other three category funds to create a fund catering to different investor risk levels. Let's start with Australian equity ETFs. Here you have six options. First up, we've got the Australian Shares Index, ticker VAS. This is Australia's biggest ETF with a whopping $15 billion invested. It invests in Australia's 300 largest companies. Then we have the Australian High Yield Fund, ticker VHY. This is Vanguard's third largest fund and targets Australian top dividend paying stocks. Then we have Australian Property, ticker VAP. As the name suggests, this ETF invests in a range of property assets. Along from there are two ETFs. Ticker VLC invests in Australia's largest companies, while VSO invests in many of Australia's smaller listed companies. And finally, we have one of the more recent additions, the ethically conscious Australian share fund, ticker VETH which has quickly scaled up to over $400 million invested. As we can see from the fund flows, each of these funds is growing with investors pouring more money in each quarter. Management fees are an important consideration when investing, as they can be a bit of a drag on the returns. VAS has the lowest fees in the Australian equities space at just 7 basis points. It was also the earliest fund to be launched back in 2009. VETH, the ethical alternative to VAS, has the second lowest at just 16 basis points. The other funds sit between 20 and 30 basis points. If we compare that to Australian Super, for example, this is an actively managed fund and the fees are around 77 basis points on a $50,000 balance. This is considered low for a super fund. So passively managed Vanguard funds do have the advantage here. And finally, all of the ETFs but VSO pay their dividends quarterly. VSO on the other hand pays out twice a year. Speaking of dividends, VHY, Vanguard's high yield ETF, pays the highest dividends with a yield of 5.8% at the time this video was made. The property fund VAP offers the second highest at 4%. If we look at the VSO ETF, which is weighed down by smaller companies, their yield is much lower. Moving on to the number of holdings, half of the Australia focused funds invest in less than 100 stocks. VAS stands out as the most diversified here with 301 stocks included. After taking out the management fees we covered earlier, the property fund performed the best over the past year to March, earning its investors a return of 26.9%. Smaller companies struggled, still earning a respectable 8.8% return and the other hung around in the mid-teens. Over three years, the high yield and large company ETFs performed the best with an average 8.8 and 8.7% return respectively. Over 10 years, property is again out front. With an Australian focus, the financials and materials sectors feature strongly in these ETFs. After Australian equities, we have international ones. Vanguard offers so many funds that I've had to split it into two different groups. First up is VGS, Vanguard's flagship international fund and it's the second largest. This fund invests in over a thousand of the world's largest companies which are primarily based in the United States. After that we have the VGAD fund which is the hedge version of the VGS fund that we just covered. If you're new to the word hedging in fund investing it simply means your returns won't be influenced by the exchange rate. If we buy foreign stock we must pay in a foreign currency, like the United States dollar. The exchange rate can sometimes change while our money is invested overseas, which many investors dislike. So VGS is great if you want the exchange rates to influence your returns, while VGAD is better for those that don't want it to. Moving along, we have VEU. 
This fund invests in companies all over the world, but excludes those from America. You won't find Apple and Tesla stocks here, but you'll find Chinese giants like Alibaba and Tencent, and the likes of Novo Nordisk from Denmark, for example. Along from them is BESG, the Ethically Conscious International Shares Fund. This fund is similar to the VGS fund, but they remove any companies that are deemed to be socially unconscious, like oil, gas, weapons, those kinds of things. Then we have VVLU, the Global Value Equity Active Fund. This is an actively trading fund that seeks companies considered to be trading below their fair intrinsic value. And finally, we have VISM, which invests in small cap stocks from around the world. Looking at the fund flows, only one fund has seen more money exit than enter, the Hedged International Fund. This is somewhat expected with the rising and falling tides of exchange rates. All other funds are growing comfortably. VEU was launched the earliest, having been launched in 2009. It also boasts the lowest management fee of just 7 basis points, less than half of VGS. The latter two funds have higher than average management fees, the first for its costly active management style, and the second may be due to their higher trade volume and lower liquidity investments. Each of the funds have a high risk rating, and all but the hedge fund pay dividends quarterly. Most of the funds that you see here have a decent dividend yield, with the value fund up around the 6% mark at the time this video was filmed. It was also observed that the small cap and the XUS fund had substantial holdings with funds spread across nearly 4,000 stocks apiece. Returns have also been exceptional over the past year, driven largely out of the United States. Those funds with a higher weighting towards North America and technology and financial sectors tended to perform better over the past year. Now we reunite with the other international equity funds that are offered by Vanguard. First up is VTS, which invests in the total US market. Simply put, as compared to some of the funds that we just looked at, this fund spreads more of its money into stocks of all sizes. So it isn't just investing in the likes of Apple and Meta, these bigger companies, it spreads the money more into some of the medium and even smaller sized companies. Moving along, we have three funds with an obvious focus. VEQ focuses on European stocks, VAE on Asian stocks excluding Japan, and VGE on emerging markets like China, India, and Brazil. Down from there, we have a global infrastructure fund which invests in massive projects critical to a functioning society. And finally, we have the Global Minimum Volatility Active Fund which invests in extremely stable stocks. VTS stands out here, as it's the third largest fund offered by Vanguard with over $4 billion invested. It's also extremely popular among many investors. Many American financial advisors recommend it over the S&P 500 funds as it better reflects the American economy of big, medium and small businesses, and it has less dependence on only the technology sector. It also carries the lowest management fee of just 3 basis points, while some funds here charge as much as 48. The European and Asian funds saw a slight outflow over the past quarter, and the minimum volatility fund looks to be losing investors quickly. The first four funds carry a risk rating of high, while the final two are a medium, owing to their focus on stable infrastructure companies and low volatility stocks. On the dividend side, this group of funds pay very low quarterly dividends of only 1-2%. to There is also a wide spread of diversification at play, with the emerging markets fund carrying nearly 6,000 stocks. If we look over at the infrastructure fund, it holds just 134. With the American economy booming over the past year, it's no surprise to see substantial returns over the past one and five years. Technology stocks are dominant in the funds oriented around the United States, Asia, emerging markets, and low volatility. So we've covered all of the funds offered by Vanguard in the stock sector, both Australian and global. Now let's take a look at Vanguard's fixed income ETFs. Here, we have seven options. First up is VAF, which invests in a broad range of Australian debt assets with a high credit rating. We also have VGB, which concentrates only on government bonds, which are backed by the state, so they're deemed a bit safer. On the other end, we have VACF, which only invests in corporate debt, which is still investment grade, but of course we don't have the safety that comes with investing in the government. Outside Australia, we have VBND, a hedged fund that invests in a broad range of debt assets. We also have VEFI, which applies the ESG principles across the debt assets of VBND, 
to avoid funding companies that support sinful industries. And to round out the list, we have VIF, which invests in government debt from roughly 35 companies. We also have VCF, which invests in government and corporate debt assets from around 50 different entities. The first fund, VAF, is the most popular here with nearly $2 billion that are invested. The fund that is growing the fastest in the fixed income space at the time this video made, however, is the VBND fund, which contradicts the outflows we saw earlier in the hedged equity funds. Debt assets tend to have lower management fees of 10 to 20 basis points, which is largely the case here. Our first four funds carry a lower risk rating of low, while the latter three are considered to have a medium risk profile. All of Vanguard's fixed income funds pay their dividends quarterly, and as you can see here, they tend to pay about 2 to 2.5% 2 yield per annum. There is also an extremely wide variance in how diverse their holdings are. The VGS fund, of course, invests only in Australian government bonds, so there isn't a whole lot to choose from. Some of the international funds, however, have global bonds from companies, governments, and a wide range of sources, so they can invest a bit more broadly. Australian corporate bonds have done well over the past year, with returns up around the 7% mark, and have done pretty well over the past five years as well. As we look further to the right, the credit rating of the fixed income investments tends to shift towards the riskier end of things. Unfortunately, over the past one and five years, it doesn't look like this has resulted in a higher return for the higher risk. And below that, we can see a bit of a breakdown of the regions, sectors, and debt issuers that the funds are invested in. And finally, we have Vanguard's diversified funds. If you have a super fund account, you're probably already well aware of what these funds are. Vanguard offers funds that are conservative, balanced, growth, and high growth risk profiles. The largest fund here is the high growth one with over $2 billion invested. It has also seen the largest inflow over the past quarter and the highest risk rating too. As they say, high risk and hopefully high return. Each of the funds carries the same annual management fee of 27 basis points, pays their dividends quarterly, and were created in 2017. Interestingly, the high growth fund offers investors the highest dividend yield of 3.5%. Like clockwork for the risk, over the past one and five years, the funds generated higher returns as the risk profile increased, which isn't always the case. And as can be seen from the top holdings, these funds invest in a collection of other Vanguard funds. This means that the diversification on these funds is unrivaled in Vanguard's offering from a holdings perspective, if that's something that you're looking for. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're struggling at tax time or need a better way to manage your stock portfolio, make sure to check out ShareSite. Their website allows you to connect directly with your broker and create professional dashboards and reports to view your investment returns. Brokers are great to trade, but often terrible to decipher the true returns of your portfolio. ShareSite bridges this gap and you can get four months free using my link down below. They have a free trial too, so make sure to check them out. If you're new to my channel, I post a lot of content from Australia and New Zealand to do with investing. Make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.